Welcome to Wednesday in the Word. I'd like to share with you today the story of a lady from the Old Testament named Abigail. We don't have a lot of information about Abigail's life, but what we do have is enough for us to admire and strive to be like her. The story is in 1 Samuel chapter 25. It's in the days of King Saul. David has been appointed king, but is not yet king. He's fought Goliath and has been a general in Saul's army. Saul is incredibly jealous of David and has attempted to kill David on several occasions. When our story takes place, David has actually spared Saul's life um, as he has been hiding in the countryside. So Saul has now gone home. David, who has 600 of his men with him, have decided to stay in the countryside. Now, as you can imagine, feeding 600 men as you're wandering around the countryside and hiding from a king that's trying to kill you would not be an easy task. And we learn through this story some of the cultural ways that David was able to do that. Because David met up with a farmer's helpers and their flocks of sheep and goats. And this farmer was Nabal. And during the time of the goats and sheep being out in the countryside, David's men protected the flocks. They protected them from raiders, um, from the surrounding um, cities, protected them from wild beasts and other things like that. They didn't get payment for that. They didn't steal any of the lambs. They didn't take um, anything at that time. But then when our story picks up, David has learned that Nabal is now in shearing time and shearing time just like harvest time if you were planting crops was a time of great festivity a time of plenty it says that um, Nabal had 3,000 sheep so that's a lot to be shearing a lot of money coming in for Nabal so David sends 10 of his helpers to go up to Nabal to ask him for some provisions out of the plenty that Nabal has. He is a very wealthy man. And what David is asking is not at all out of character. It's very cultural. And the servants explain this to Nabal, explain that they protected Nabal's flocks. They protected his his men. They looked after them. They didn't steal anything from them. And In return for that, they would now like some provisions out of the plenty that Nabal has. Well, now, Nabal is not the nicest of men. You would not want to meet him. And his response to David's servants was very much over the top. He is arrogant and there is no way he's sharing any of his wealth that he has. And he basically sneers at them saying, who is this son of Jesse? Um, Who does he think he is? And then he basically, he accuses the servants of, of, of being runaways that are now just trying to take advantage of this situation. And Nabal's response is, should I take my bread and my water and my meat that I've slaughtered for my shearers and give it to a bed of outlaws who come from who knows where. So, of course, David's men now are not happy. They return to David and they share this news that, you know what, here was this wealthy man and now he is not going to help them out. They're not going to get any food. Well, David responds, Also not the best response to this bad news because David flies off the handle. He immediately grabs his sword, tells all his servants to go get your swords. We're going to go fight Nabal. And he makes this vow that by morning, if there's any of Nabal's men still alive, then God can smite him. So here he is. He grabs 400 of his men he leaves 200 to stay stay behind and they go off in this rush to now slaughter Nabal and all of Nabal's men. 
Well, not a good situation that we have here. Fortunately, one of these servants from Nabal has the sense to go and find Abigail. Now, Abigail is Nabal's wife. She is not at all like Nabal, but she has obviously had to deal with Nabal's quick temper and foolishness and arrogance and all of that before. And so the servant comes and shares all of this, that David has come, that David had protected, that what David's men had said was definitely true, and that Nabal has then responded in this very rash arrogance and sent them away empty-handed. And it is here when Abigail comes into her own. We see this lady who takes this situation of conflict and she just handles it beautifully. She is a real woman of discernment. She is able to look at all the characters that are there, David's response, Nabal's response, the actual situation, the servants, what is due, and she goes into action immediately. And we see there in verse 18 of 1 Samuel chapter 25, it reads, Abigail wasted no time. She quickly gathered 200 loaves of bread, two wineskins full of wine, five sheep that had been slaughtered, nearly a bushel of roasted grain, 100 clusters of raisins and 200 fig cakes. She packed them on donkeys and said to her servants, go on ahead, I will follow you shortly. But she didn't tell her husband Nabal what she was doing. So here she is, she gets her servants straight into action. They start baking bread, getting everything ready. They pack up the donkeys and she sends it all out. Probably more provision than what David was actually even wanting to start with. Nicer provisions, proper meat, wine rather than just water. And she sends this ahead and then she comes riding her donkey after. And as she's going through the mountain ravine, she sees David and his men coming towards her. Now, David is still incredibly angry. And here is Abigail meeting this man who is basically out to kill her entire family. And here it is. And Abigail comes along and just totally diffuses everything. And she says... When she sees David, she falls at his feet, bows down before him and accepts all of the blame. She's not passing it on to Nabal. She's not saying, oh, you know, just forget about him. He's silly. It's just all his fault and let me see if I can make it right. No, she says, I will accept this blame. Put it all on me. Listen to what I have to say. Then she doesn't actually totally excuse Nabal at all because she does say, hang on, Nabal is a foolish man. So please make allowances for him because he doesn't make great decisions. And then she goes on, now, my Lord, as surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, since the Lord has kept you from murdering and taking vengeance into your own hands, let all your enemies and those who try to harm you be as cursed as Nabal is. And here is a present that I, your servant, have brought to you and your young men. Please forgive me if I have offended you in any way. The Lord will surely reward you with a lasting dynasty, for you are fighting the Lord's battles." The wisdom that Abigail shows by coming in, taking that blame, falling at David's feet and just saying, you know what, David, you don't have to have the blood of this vengeance on your head. You don't have to go and kill Nabal and all his men. Just take my gift. Let me take that blame. And may anyone who goes against you be as cursed as what Nabal is. And it's this wisdom and discernment that Abigail shows 
that I think is a real lesson for us when we're facing conflict, that we don't, one, like Nabal, come in it and be arrogant and dismissive of whoever it is that's coming up to us saying, oh, you know, you don't matter. I already know all the answers. But we also shouldn't act as David did, where we just fly into a rage and take it off. Oh, I'm going to fix you and go at it and try and fix all the problems in that way, straight away, just by getting angry and aggressive. When we face conflict, we need to be looking at it as Abigail did, acting quickly, but really asking for wisdom taking this situation that was difficult and turning it around, knowing what to do and acting in that way. In the book of James, we have a real call for how we need to be acting when life is really difficult. And in James chapter 1, right from verse 2, It says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity of real joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Now, I am sure that Abigail had many opportunities to test her faith, to test out the hardships in dealing with her husband, Nabal. He was not an easy man. But all of those hardships had developed her into this amazing lady who was able to show such amazing wisdom in this situation. Now, verse 5 immediately goes on from this and tells us, If we need wisdom, you ask our generous God and he will give it to you. So for us, even if we're at the beginning stages of our Christian life, where we may not have had lots and lots of struggles to be building our perseverance and endurance and discernment and wisdom, we can still come to God right now and say, God, give me the wisdom that I need to handle this. Give me the wisdom so that I can act in a way that is gentle and humble and giving, that I may not act out of anger or arrogance, but just to come simply before your feet and know the right way to do it so that God may be glorified through our difficult times. Now, Abigail's story ends in a a beautiful Hollywood way in that she goes back after seeing David. Her husband is having a wild party. He is incredibly drunk. She does not choose to tell him what has happened. She waits until the morning. He has now sobered up. She goes and shares with Nabal this entire tale of David, of David wanting to come and seek revenge and to kill Nabal and all of his men And then how she had stepped in and appeased David and diffused the situation entirely. Now, this news, whether just from the news or just purely from God, strikes Nabal down. And he is in like a stroke. And he stays that way for about 10 days and then he dies. This is a nice relief for Abigail. And when David hears of Nabal's death, he actually comes and asks Abigail to be his wife. And so Abigail, along with another lady um, who David also marries, um, as was the custom of that um, day, but Abigail becomes David's wife. And as we read a little bit later, she that they have then one son. And so this is the story of Abigail from 1 Samuel 25. And I pray you are encouraged to one, ask God for wisdom, to really seek that out and to be a woman as Abigail was, a woman of wisdom and discernment.